Hello, this is for day 191, a Bible in one year, and our Bible text, Job chapters 41 to 42, and then Acts chapter 16, verses 22 to 40. So to begin, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for another day that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings, for the guidance, for the wisdom, for the trials, and for the salvation, and this gift of life. Thank you, Lord, and we pray that you continue to guide us and help us along the way. Show us what is right and what is wrong. Help us to make better decisions. Help us to become better Christians. And we pray, Lord, that you would enlighten us as we read your word for today. And we pray that you would also forgive our sins. Help us, Lord, to overcome them. Help us to live uh, righteously. Help us to live according to your commandments, according to your word, according to your will, Lord. And uh, this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so Job chapter 41. Canst thou draw out Leviathan with an hook, or his tongue with a cord, which thou lettest down? Canst thou put an hook into his nose, or bore his jaw through with a thorn? Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Will thou take him for a servant forever? Will thou play with him as with a bird, or will thou bind him for thy maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? Canst thou fill his skin with barbed iron, or his head with fish spears? Lay thine hand upon him, remember the battle, do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down, even at the sight of him? None is so fierce that dare steer him up, who then is able to stand before me? Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportion. Who can discover the face of his garment, or who can come to him with his double brittle? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. His scales are his pride, shut up together as with a closed seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. But his knee sings a light does shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lumps, and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils go its smoke, as out of a seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindled, kindled coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth. In his neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned into joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together, they are firm in themselves, they cannot be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. When he raised up himself, the mighty are afraid, by reason of breakings, they purify themselves. The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold the spear, the dart, nor the haberdashon. He steameth iron as straw and brass. As rotten wood, the arrow cannot make him flee, sling stones are turned with him into stubble. Darts are counted as stubble, he laugheth at the shaking of a spear. Sharp stones are under him, he spreadeth sharp pointed things upon the mire. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot, he maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh a pot to shine after him, one would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth there is not his Upon earth there is not his like who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Job chapter 42 Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare, uh, declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz, The Damanite, my right is kindled against thee, and against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job hath. Therefore take that take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job and offer of yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you. For him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, in that ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. So Eliphaz the Temanite and Bildad the Shuhite, and so far the Naamathite went, and did according as the Lord commanded them. 
commanded them, the Lord also accepted Job. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as, as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren, and all his sisters, and all they that had been of his acquaintance before, and did eat bread with him in his house, and they bemoaned him, and comforted him, over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had fourteen thousand sheep, and six thousand camels, and a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand sheep asses. He, uh, he had also seven sons and three daughters, and he called the name of the first Jemima, and the name of the second Kesia, and the name of the third Karen Hapur. And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this lived Job an hundred and forty years, and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even for a generation. So Job died, being old and full of days. All right, we now go to Acts chapter 16 and read verses 22 to 40. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, such a charge thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and every one's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been, had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm. For we are all here. Then he called for a light, and sprung in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them in the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his, straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he sat meet before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. And when it was day, the magistrate sent the surgeon, saying, Let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told the saying to Paul, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart, and go in peace. But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly and condemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison, and now do they trust us out privily? Nigh. Nay, verily, but let them come to themselves and fetch us out. And the surgeon stole his words unto the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they were Romans. And they came and besought them, and brought them out, and desired them to depart out of the city. And they went out of the prison, and entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them, and departed. Alright, so we're done with the Bible reading for the reflection or something to share. So for yeah, you know, last chapters of Job forty one to forty two. So Job in a way he did, you know, acknowledge that he he said a few, you know, bad things or a few wrong things against the Lord. But he recognized that, he acknowledged it and he repented of those things. So in a way he did uh, ask for forgiveness or he asked to be forgiven by the Lord and the Lord is uh, merciful so he did forgive Job but as for his three friends uh, God turned to them and said that I'm not pleased with how uh, you guys spoke to Job or something like that right and so um, he told them to offer uh, sacrifice or sacrificial offerings you know to ask for their forgiveness and to ask Job to pray for them and Job, being a righteous person, of course, he did pray for his friends. And after that, God, um, he blessed Job twice as much as before. And so after the trial, after Job has proven that he's still faithful to the Lord and that he would not curse God just because of the affliction that he is going through. So God... Uh, blessed him because of it, right? That through the trials, we must remain faithful to the Lord and we must, you know, trust in him and know that there are 
reasons why Jesus, uh, why the Lord is letting us go through some trials, right? And mostly it's for us to, you know, learn some lessons along the way and for us to become better Christians, of course. All right, and then in Acts chapter 16, so, you know, there was Paul and Silas, they were sent into prison, but instead of despairing, they, uh, you know, they, how what they call it, they praised the Lord, they sang praises unto God, and then God did help them, right, by, you know, shaking the foundations and allowing them to have, you know, free access or a, a way to leave the prison uh, safely, but they did not leave the prison um they cared for they probably cared for the guard or something and they wanted to witness to the guard so when the guard saw you know that he was about to kill himself because you know it's a great blunder to allow all the prisoners out um and so as he was about to kill himself paul told him not to harm himself and that they were all inside and in a way this man knew that he'd been saved. These people could have gone out and left, but they did not. And so he was saved. Okay, and the guard asked him how he must be he would be, you know, further saved. Because he probably heard Paul, you know, talking to the other prisoners and he probably heard him singing those praises to God. Okay. And so Paul was able to exhort uh, share the gospel with this person and his house and they were also brought into his house to have a meal and to talk with the rest of his household and they were saved right they were also baptized and then later on uh, the magistrates have told them you know, let them go uh, it's probably just you know one night in jail just to threaten them or let them experience the heart some sort of hardships but of course that those kind of things would not stop them from continuing with the work with the ministry uh you know sharing the gospel sharing the good news and allowing more people to hear the word of god right so i think uh in a way a message there is that we should not stop even if there is persecution even if people are not uh in a way not prepared to hear the gospel if they are not prepared to acknowledge god and jesus christ so we should not stop you know should continue and should try again and there are other people who would you know like to hear the word of god and would probably believe you know through the working of workings of the lord all right so that's it for this one again this is for day 191 a bible in one year and we've read job chapters 41 to 42 and acts chapter 16 verses 22 to 40 thank you and god bless